With the 318 PTU, we get our first look at hull scraping in Star Citizen. And today we're going to take a very first look at what that looks like. Christmas is fast approaching, and if you don't know what to wish for, then consider checking out today's sponsor, Rich Wallet. Rich Wallets are small, compact wallets that can hold up to 12 cards. If you want to carry coins or keys, get their optional cavity tray. All their wallets are made from premium materials like aluminium, carbon fiber, and they all come with RFID blocking to prevent digital theft. So check out rich.com forward slash D2EA and use offer code D2EA to get 10% off. Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Star Citizen. So we're going to be looking at hull scraping and I should just say that everything you're going to be shown today is going to be recorded uh, doing the wave one of the 318 PTU. So what you see here may change, maybe rebalanced. So there is currently two ships in the game that's able to do hull scraping right now. One of them is the Drake Vulture, which is a new ship. We're going to take a quick look at that in a minute. And there's also the Aegis Redeemer, which we've had in the game for a while. First of all, let's take a quick look at the Drake Vulture. It's this yellow, very industrial looking ship from, well, yeah, Drake Interplanetary, as you can imagine. There are basically two entry points into the uh, ship. One of them is from the left-hand side of the ship, where you can hit up this ladder that's going to unfold for some reason. I don't know why it would be static, but it unfolds. Then you can crawl up on the on top of the ship and you can walk up and you can open up the side of the um, of the cockpit. And from here, you can walk straight into the cockpit, get into the chair and get to flying. Word of warning though, if you do leave the cockpit seat with the door open, it seems like it puts you outside. So be careful if you are for some reason not wearing a space suit or if you are in space or the ship is moving and you try to leave the ship while it's moving as you get, you will be put into space it seems. But if the door is closed, it's just gonna exit the seat normally. Behind the cockpit, we find a small uh, living area. We get access to a number of components. Again, this has this very industrial feel to it. We can see access to like power plants and coolers right here in the, uh, in the living quarters. So it doesn't really try to hide the fact that this is an industrial ship. We get the usual combination toilet, restroom, shower, as we always see in these, uh, these Drake ships, a small bed, and that's about it. It's not really a lot of living combination in this, and there is only a single bed, it is a single person ship. Moving further back, we get to a ladder that takes us down to the lower part of the ship, which just takes us to the cargo hold. And now we are at the back of the ship, and from here we get the second point of ingress to the ship. A nice wide cargo ramp at the back that opens up, and this is of course where we're going to be able to load and more likely unload cargo. Back here we will also find the scrap refiner. This is going to refine the scrap that we are going to be mining and compressing it into one SCU containers. These containers will fit on the new physicalized cargo grid that you find behind here where there is room for up to 12 containers. You can move them away from, uh, from the pad here by just running into them and just pushing them around. Um, but it is highly recommended that you do use a tractor beam as it seems that's the only way you can actually make them stick to the, uh, to the cargo grid at the moment. So let's talk about how hull scraping works. So derelict ships is going to spawn in a similar fashion to asteroids. So you can run through asteroid fields, you can scan, and you will see these new icons pop up. And those are going to be hull scrapable, either complete ships. We've seen a number of 890 jumps lying around that you can go and hull scrape, but also just individual small pieces of debris floating around that you can go and hull scrape. If you're familiar with mining in Star Citizen, hull scraping is going to feel quite similar, but it is a lot more simplified than mining is. You see, you press M, just as with mining, to deploy the hull scrapers. Once they're deployed, you have one on the right hand and one on the left hand trigger, in this case, since we have access to two. When you fire them, they are basically going to begin to strip away the upper layers of the ship. And we can see these two round um, like indicators that indicate how big of the area that we are scraping actually has hull. So that means if we just keep scraping the same area, we are very quickly going to deplete it and we need to constantly move around like painting over the surface so we can, can move over to fresh areas all the time and scrape that uh, material away so that it goes into the refinery. We'd also see a progress bar that shows us how far the refinery is full until it is ready to go and compress into the next, um, into the next one SCU box. There is no like power controls, you can't turn them up or down so they are more or less efficient. They do have two mining modes though, as you can see up here and here. The first one is a very narrow, very accurate beam that is 
it scrapes a little bit slower, but it's a lot more efficient. That means that you get a lot more material out of it per a square meter that you scrape compared to the other mode, which is a much wider beam and will scrape the hull away a lot quicker. But overall, you also get less materials out of it. Um, so that's kind of the drawback. You also have the option on the Vulture to go and split the beams. So you can see here I've been mining with them uh, almost pointing at the same point, but you have the option to press and hold Alt and then you can scroll them out to the side. Uh, and you can also use, as a control and Alt you can use to also make them go up and down. You can basically split the beams so that they point in different, um, at different points of the ship. Once the refinery is full, we will see it will go into a process where it will go and uh, begin the refining process. But while the refining process is running, you're not able to hull scrape. Well, you can hull scrape, but the materials you hull scrape in this period is not, it's just going to be wasted. So there's no point in hull scraping while the refinery is running. It only seems to take like a few seconds for it to complete the process, so it's not the end of the world. And you are going to need to get out of your chair anyway, because once that box is spawned, it's going to spawn right in front of the, uh, right, the, the refinery. And if that spot is occupied when the next load is full, it's not going to be able to put it out. So between every box you mine, you have to go down and you move that cube or that box off that uh, pad and put it into the cargo grip. So luckily the ship is small, but it is also dangerous as you are going to be sitting somewhere in space and it's a prime moment for a would-be pirate that might have been observing you at a distance to wait for you to finish a box so that they know you're not at the helm to attack. So be careful and make sure to keep it on your radar before you leave. After you collected a few boxes, you can head to any of the trade outposts at the major cities, since this is where they pay the best prices. You can sell them at other locations, but the prices are significantly lower. I got around seven and a half, a little bit more than seven and a half thousand credits per SCU, meaning that a full vulture is gonna pay in the vicinity of like 91, 92,000 alpha UC. And given that you can probably do, reliably, I would say two runs, maybe three, I don't know yet, but about two or three runs by this per hour, it's gonna be a pretty decent moneymaker if these prices persist over to the live server. Now, when it comes to hull scraping in the Reclaimer, that's a whole different game. Like, where the Vulture is a small, single-person ship, the Reclaimer absolutely requires crew in order to run effectively. So just to look at the different positions that you're needed to occupy to run a Reclaimer, you're gonna need a pilot to move the ship and navigate it around. You're gonna need two to manage the hull scrapers. You could have the pilot run double duty so that he will both be piloting the ship and hull scraping, but as you're gonna need to move the ship around as you're hull scraping, um, the guy who's gonna be doing the mining and also being the pilot is gonna run basically going to be half, uh, half time. So if you really want to optimize the crew, you do need three up here in the cockpit. At the other end of the ship, down in the salvage processing hold, you're going to have the two processors, one attached to each of the hull scrapers that you find on the reclaimer. And just as with the Vulture, you're going to need someone down here who can take these boxes off these refineries and put them someplace else. One place you could put them would be either just in the cargo grid that exists inside the uh, the salvage processing, or alternatively you can throw them down this scoop. This gonna takes them down into the salvage hold below, which for some reason doesn't seem to have a cargo grid. But from there you can take them into the elevator and send them over to the cargo hold, which obviously does have a cargo grid. So when it comes to cargo management, you're gonna need one or two people down here as well. Um, you can make do with one person that would just take the cubes off and store them in the cargo grid in the salvage hold and then as you're moving between uh, areas to find new uh, salvage, you can he can then spend time moving it into the elevator and taking it down to the cargo hold and then moving it in there instead. One person might be able to do it. Uh, I would say that two people would probably be preferred. So I would say the bare minimum of people you can run the reclaimer with effectively would be three people and ideally you probably want five. Should you consider picking up Star Citizen yourself, then you should head over to getstarcitizen.d2a.com where you can sign up and if you do so using that link, you will get an additional 5,000 Alpha UEC. And I'm gonna get a referral point that I get some in-game ships and equipment for it. But that's it for today. Thanks a lot for watching. If you did like the video, then I would really appreciate it if you would go down and give it a like. And also, maybe even consider subscribing to the channel and helping me towards that goal of 100,000 subscribers. Thanks a lot for watching and also next time. I will see you guys in space.